to cloud. I've started recording. Can everyone see that's recording? And so it will most likely just be recording the screen as well as my video. But if you don't want to be added into the recording, happy for you to turn off your video. And we have um, prevented people who are not co-hosts to not unmute themselves to prevent anyone from accidental unmuting to disrupt the flow. All right. And for everyone who just joined, happy for you to drop, say hi in the chat to say who you are, who are you and where are you calling in from? Perfect. All right, let's start. Welcome everyone to Demo Day. My name is Dana and I'm one of the co-directors of Kickstart this year. I want to say a huge thank you to everyone for coming tonight or this afternoon or late at night, wherever you're based. The Kickstart team, Cohort and I are all really, really excited to have all of you here tonight to celebrate our student founders as well as what they've managed to achieve through the past six months. Before we dive straight into the pitches, I'd like to spend the next few minutes to talk to you about Kickstart as well as the journey that our cohort has been through over the last six months. So Kickstart. We are a student-run community that is empowering the next generation of student founders in their entrepreneurial journey. And we do this ma in mainly two ways. First, we run a six-month cross-campus accelerator program where we bring students across the UK together to meet each other, to expand their social networks, as well as to build really strong cross-disciplined co-founding teams. From there, we pick the best concepts to bring through the very early stages of how to build a company through weekly workshops that are very much mentor led. We also engage with the wider student founder community through Kickstart Collective, which is our co community outreach arm. We run a lot of fireside chats, panel discussions, hackathons, pitching events with other student organizations and universities who are operating within the student founder community. Within the accelerator, the past six months have been an absolute whirlwind. Last October, students across the UK came together in team formation. And throughout four weeks, they attended social mixers, speaker talks, mentor office hours to eventually pitch a problem that they want to solve to the Kickstart team and mentors. From there, we accepted 15 teams into phase one and phase two of the program which consisted of weekly workshops that covered the central topics of how to build a very early stage company, such as problem validation, ideation, building an MVP, customer acquisition, financials, as well as pitching. And now today we are at Demo Day where they will be showcasing what they have done throughout the past six months. The 2021 cohort is extremely diverse. We are 40% women and 63% of the cohort are either are Black, Asian, or minority ethnicity backgrounds. We are also overwhelmingly undergraduates, and many of the students who came into the program last October knew very, very little about building a company and how to go about it. Most of them came into the program with either an ambition, an idea, or just simply a desire to learn more about the startup and entrepreneurship ecosystem. And through weekly workshops, that are very much mentor led and a lot of mentors help. Our cohort has managed to come up with some really interesting ideas that are tackling some of society's most pressing problems. Collectively, they've managed to talk to hundreds of customers and experts, as well as built up a reliable network of mentors and experts who will help them within their industry. The Kickstart team and I are continuously blown away by the amount of progress every single team in the cohort manages to achieve week on week and how, by how ready and open all of you guys are to learning from the speakers, learning from the mentors and to continue to iterate and improve. Everyone that's part of Kickstart are really, really impressed by what every single one of you has managed to achieve over the past six months. So today, Demo Day is your chance to showcase what you've done, what you've managed to achieve, pitch your startup, share your vision, listen to feedback from the guests, and try to build some meaningful connections with the guests that we've managed to get today. We can't um, go on without thanking all of our mentors who are such a key part to the Kickstarter program. Without you, the program 
simply would not have been possible. And the Kickstart team, as well as the cohort, are really, really grateful for all the time that you've given up every Thursday evening and for all the help that you've given us as the Kickstart team, as well as the cohort. So now I'll pass on to Octave, to who will briefly touch on the agenda of today. Thanks, Dana, and welcome to all of you that have just joined. Um, so again, thank you all for taking the time out and joining us tonight uh, for this pitch, for this demo day. Um, and yeah, that's very kind of all of you. Um, so I'm Octav, the other co-director of Kickstarter, and I'm super excited for all of you to see this year's cohort pitches. Uh, in a few minutes, I'll hand this over to Dana, who will be hosting the, the pitches. Uh, but before I do that, I'd like to run through this evening's agenda and thank our sponsors. So in just a second, the teams will start pitching. These pitches will take around 45 minutes, during which each of the teams will be capped at two minutes per pitch. We'll also have a short break at the halfway point, during which we'll announce the nominees for a few polls that we ran in the cohort this week. Next slide. <laughs> um, at seven, once the whole cohort has pitched, breakout rooms for each startup will be opened and the rest of the event will be taking place between all of these breakout rooms. So um, for the first 45 minutes of these sessions, uh, the teams will be answering questions and receiving feedback from uh, four to five handpicked accelerators or investors each. These are all experienced professionals who tend to have some prior expertise in the fields of the startups. So the conversations are sure to be entertaining for those of you who are watching. Um, then from 7.45 onwards, we'll move into the next part of the evening. Uh, we'll, that will be opening up the breakout rooms to include everyone and enable you to speak directly with the founders and the others in the breakout room. This will be a great opportunity to offer your own feedback and insights on the startups, as well as to network with everyone here tonight. Finally, um, at 8.20, we'll be closing the breakout rooms and we'll wrap up in here in the main room, um, hopefully in time for a curtain call at 8.30. So that's everything for tonight's event. Throughout the, throughout the evening, we'll have um, a feedback form available. Um, sorry. Feedback form. Yeah. So throughout the evening, we'll have a feedback form available for you. Um, as you can probably tell by now, the main objective of tonight is to gather feedback and connections for the startups. So we've created this very, very short Google form that you'll be able to fill out at any point throughout the entire event. Um, you'll be able to say anything you'd like to any of the teams and leave your contact details if you're happy for them to reach out after the event. Um, this is super helpful for them. And it could be quite interesting for you as well, um, depending on what you, you what your intentions are. So as soon as the pitches start, we'll be dropping a link in the chat. Otherwise, if you haven't already, you can scan the QR code here on the screen. My presentation is slightly flawed here because next slide. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> before passing over to Diana, I'd also like to say a few words about OneTech and Landscape Ventures, who have enabled us to run this accelerator this year. Um, securing funding was very, very difficult uh, over the summer, so we're very lucky to have both of these organizations on board whose visions are so well aligned with ours. OneTech strives to challenge inequity and the lack of diversity in tech. They do so by supporting BAME founders at every step of their entrepreneurial journey. If this is something that you are interested in, um, then I'd definitely check out their website. I've added the link here. Uh, they, they, you can, from there, you, you'll be able to find out a lot more about their employability incubator, their pre-accelerator program, and their enterprise incubator. OneTech has consistently pushed us to measure our success by the number of students that we've impacted, which has been an amazing North Star metric to have throughout the year. Um, we, I'd also like to thank Landscape Ventures, who are our other sponsors for this year. Uh, they have also been trying to change the face of startups. Landscape helps founders better navigate uh, the fundraising ecosystem by using an anonymous reviews to identify the most suitable investors for you. Uh, this is definitely something that a lot of the Kickstarter teams could potentially use at some point in, in the coming months if they do decide to 
to raise investment. Um, so they've kind of deemed themselves the, the glass door for VCs. So that, that's kind of their catchphrase. But the committee are big fans of the project as it's run by Will and Gabby, who I'm sure a few of you know. Um, so these guys are both our sponsors and our mentors. So I can't thank them enough. And yeah, so that's it for the agenda for the sponsors. So if at, I'd just like to add, if at any point in the evening you guys face any technological issues, just drop me a message and I'll get that fixed for you. And without further ado, I'll now pass this on to Dana, who will be hosting the pitch sessions. And good luck to all of the startups pitching here tonight. Um, yeah, let's get started. Thank you, Octave. Yep, so the 2021 cohort, we have broadly split the startups into five different categories. We will be starting with EdTech, with Test and Tutor, and then going on to MedTech, Sustainable Tech, Finance and Legal Tech, as well as B2B Marketplace. Janvi has already um, dropped a link to the feedback form into the chat, so it'd be really cool if everyone can open that up and just drop any quick comments that you have to the cohort and we will share that with them afterwards so that and for guests who got allocated startups for the focus feedback at 7 p.m um Janvid, if you can just drop their guest allocation table link into the chat as well for them to check which startup that you are allocated with to essentially be more focused during their pitch and so you can be prepared with better and more focused feedback all right, let's move on to pitch. I will stop my presentation and Orma, how are you feeling? There we go. I'm unmuted, awesome. Perfect. Yeah, so let me share my screen. Just give me a moment. Right, right, yeah. Um, it, will the timer be pinned? Oh yeah, balance, yeah. All right, take it away. Sweet, so hi everyone. My name is Ormus, and I've been teaching IB Maps for the past five years, during which I've seen many students struggle to achieve the grade they want. I've noticed that a common reason is that students don't really know what their weaknesses are, so they end up repeating the same mistakes over and over. We discovered that around 70% of students rely mainly on past papers for revision, and 56% feel like their progress is stagnant and they can't really achieve their desired grade. Especially in IB, I've seen so many students sacrifice most of their social life just to get into their dream university, miss the required grade by just one mark, just because of their inefficient study method. Now imagine how great it would be if someone could tell you what those weaknesses are. And on top of that, create a personalized study plan tailored specifically for you. This is what I thought when I was teaching. I thought that tools like this should definitely exist, but I couldn't find anything as the current products on the market function as just standalone question banks and nothing more. And basically that's how test and tutor idea was born. So as a student, you go on our website, get an initial test that tells you how well you understand each concept within a specific subject. For instance, within mathematics, you may have a good understanding of algebra, but need more practice in statistics. Um, the platform then recommends you the best set of unseen questions to study next, so that you can constantly work on your biggest weaknesses and track how you are improving over time. At the moment, we're focusing on the IB market that currently has around 200,000 students worldwide and later on plan to expand to other curriculums. We are also planning to use a subscription-based model and already have around 200 students and 100 teachers signed up to our beta version. So finally, the team, both Leon and I come from technical backgrounds and have about seven years of combined teaching experience. So join us and transform the way students study and help millions of students achieve the great they want. Thank you. Thank you very much, Irma. Up next, we have Case Map. Perfect. And Fallon. When you, and for Asma and Case Math, when you guys see the countdown, happy for you to start whenever. Case Math helps you secure the career that you want. Everyone's heard of the stereotype of students wanting to enter lucrative careers such as investment banking consulting. And for good reason, every year, thousands of students around the world grind trying to get into these roles. 
but they struggle. They don't know how to prepare. We found through speaking to students that 92% want to improve their skills to maximize their chance of getting into, uh, into these roles, but they're extremely competitive with success rates as low as one in 130 for certain jobs. The problem is just that there's no easy way to learn and practice the skills that are needed. Case math is a solution, a platform designed to develop the skills required to help you through the application process. It's simple, choose your industry, learn about it, practice and get feedback from successful applicants. We've had positive feedback from over 50 users across nine different countries. Our user base continues to grow at over 10% weekly. We'll operate on a three tier subscription model. The initial focus will be on consulting and investment banking due to our experience. We aim to develop our platform with a student user base and then refine towards a B2B model. We want to include career development and employee upskilling. Out of the 9.8 million people looking for a new job in the UK, 1.1 million are active job seekers. This is our market. CaseMap combines the best of it because its competitors' offerings. Coaches are far too expensive for most of the students, usually over 125 pounds an hour, and other platforms like Khan Academy are often used for academics and not job applications. CaseMath's unique selling point is that it offers personalized syllabi and tailored feedback to mimic the role of a teacher. Our team is uniquely positioned to make this possible. We have extensive experience in consulting and investment banking and have a combined tutoring experience of over 10 years. We ask for 80,000 pounds for six months runway so that we can develop our proof of concept. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Kesma. Up next, we have Eurosent. Manoj, how are we doing? Very well. Thank you very much. Let me just share my screen. And we are good to go, I think. Hi, I'm Manoj, co-founder of Eurosense. If you get admitted into hospital today, there is a 20% chance you will need a urinary catheter. Urinary catheters are a ticking time bomb of complications for patients. The problems range from urethral trauma to catheter-associated urinary tract infections, which cost the NHS £100 million to fight annually and results in 2,000 preventable deaths. This is crazy, and the only reason it's happening is because catheters were designed 80 years ago and haven't changed since. These catheters are failing patients, leaving them in pain and incapable of getting the treatment they deserve. We're here to change that. At Eurosense, we've redesigned the urinary catheter to improve lives everywhere. Starting with the tip, our design decreases urethral trauma and we've stopped bladder injuries altogether. Our balloon protects the bladder, allows complete drainage of urine and is shaped to sit far more comfortably. And for the tube, we've decreased blockages and we're tinkering with surface texturing to further delay bacterial growth. These features result in a catheter that works for the patient without any of the downsides. This is a huge market and it's a market that's growing as the population ages. But more importantly than market size, we're improving the quality of life of millions of people with our device. In a space that's reliant on designs from years ago, we're truly offering something different that leaves no patient problem unaddressed. In the UK, we're starting off by targeting private institutions for quick adoption before scaling up to the NHS. Internationally, we're looking into licensing and distribution avenues for fast market penetration. And we're the right team to make this happen. Innovation meets medicine. Sean, Federico and I have a range of bioengineering experience and Reg has first-hand experience dealing with catheters and the problems they cause. And we're guided by urologists and business mentors with decades of experience in their fields. At Eurosense, our vision is a world where catheters are a tool and not a ticking time bomb. Join us on our journey to save lives. We're looking for advice, funding and connections. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eurofans. Up next, we have Snapset. Hello. Can you see that? Yep, and happy for you to start when you see the countdown from Ballot. Okay, I see it. Did you know that one sixth of all patients with diabetes get foot ulcers? And 85% of all amputations are caused by these diabetic foot ulcers. Unfortunately, one in 20 of these patients die within 24 weeks. 
These patients require urgent referral to diabetic specialists within 24 hours. However, over two thirds of appointments were delayed by more than three weeks because both patients and GPs struggled to recognize these ulcers, leading to amputations and removal of toes. SnapSense makes detecting ulcers as easy as taking a selfie. Our platform allows patients to snap a standardized photo of their foot ulcer and answer a symptoms-based questionnaire. This information is made automatically accessible for clinicians to review. Our research validated AI platform helps clinicians before and during the review process by automatically detecting the most urgent patients. Our competitors require complex hardware, making the monitoring process expensive and difficult to distribute widely. SnapSense only requires a smartphone to connect patients and doctors. Clinicians and patients we interviewed recognize SnapSense's value, which is why we're launching our prototype at St. Thomas' Hospital. We also have access to their image database of over 2,000 patients, which will help us train our AI models. Now, this is a global problem with over 415 million people worldwide with diabetes. This is why we're building an inclusive global image database, and we've already partnered with clinicians from UK, Harvard, Brazil, and India. We plan to operate, sorry, our primary market of diabetic foot ulcers is worth $7 billion, which expands to $17 billion once we include chronic and acute wounds. We operate on a subscription model, charging hospitals a monthly fee per patient, and adding our AI capabilities will help us accelerate healthcare access in areas where diabetic doctors are very scarce. We have a great team with experience in medicine, biomedical and electronic engineering and AI research at King's Imperial and Harvard. For our ask, we're looking for a tech mentor, preferably with experience in healthcare AI. So please join us today to help us save limbs and save lives. Thank you very much, Sam Sands. Up next, we have Medified, Sam and Tom. Thank you very much. All right, as always, when you see the countdown, happy for you to start whenever. Good evening, everyone. I'm Samuel. And I'm Sum. And we'd both like to introduce you to our game-changing company, Medified. Meet Bob. He's lived with arthritis for as long as he can remember, and there really is no good treatment in sight. The doctors have prescribed him with Medrol, but every time he takes it, his mood plummets. And he has no other choice as failure to take them would cause some serious health consequences. But this hope. Pfizer has just developed a brand new drug that promises Bob will never have mood swings again, and it's 10 times more effective than the current one. However, because it's a novel drug, Novartis only has conditional approval for its use and must collect data proving its value to patients and its effectiveness within one year. Otherwise, the drug will no longer be authorized by the UK medicines regulator, meaning Bob will have to go back to those meds he was on before. And this is why pharmaceutical companies are desperately spending up to 300 million pounds per year trying to get real world data. Enter Medified, a mobile app that gives patients a voice whilst bridging the data gap needed to authorize life-saving medicine. But with React, we allow patients to scan their medi medication packets to access a digital version of the medication leaflets, which is far more accessible than the paper ones used today. Once engaged, patients can then and take short questionnaires, which are which they are rewarded with points that can be redeemed and used to donate to a charity of their choice. Pharmaceutical companies can then access our analytics through a subscription-based platform. So far, we've secured a partnership with Portsmouth Hospital and we'll be testing the app with patient groups once it's fully ready. And we're supported by advisors who've worked at some of the biggest pharmaceutical and healthcare companies in Europe. So what are you waiting for? Invest in our pre-seed round to be a part of giving patients a voice. Thank you very much, Sam and Son from Medified. Up next, we have Matter of Mind. All right, whenever you're ready. Meet Jenny. Jenny is in her final year of university and she is stressed, anxious and tired. She deals with it like a lot of us do, by sleeping in, drinking coffee and binging Netflix. She's tried some self-help apps, but she finds that her mood isn't improving. But Jenny is just one of many students. 
Anxiety, worry, loneliness are amongst the top concerns for students currently. In fact, an ONS survey found that 57% of students reported a worsening in their mental health and well-being during lockdown. And 71% of student respondents from our market research wanted to improve the personalization of their current self-help tools. They also wanted more diversity in the activities they use and solutions that work in the moment. These pain points are the main reasons why students struggle to find success with self-help apps. And this is where our app, Matter of Mind, comes in. Jenny can enter how she feels into the mood tracker and journal with an option to voice note. She can view her mood highlights and, st and statistics to see her progress and meet her goals. The key feature of the app that it uses sentiment analysis and emotion AI to recommend personalized activities. We cover a broad range of categories from books, podcasts, to even YouTube videos, and the AI adapts um, to what works for Jenny. We use a premium subscription model so customers can access three recommendations from a limited number of categories. With a subscription, you can then unlock more options. We will also partner with five universities by 2022. The mood tracking app market is also anticipated to grow to $1.3 billion by 2024. Current apps in the market are insufficient to improve mood in the long term as they either lack variety or personalization, which are the two key customer pain points. Our focus in both categories ensures that customers have sustainable solutions. The next step will be to build the portfolio of recommended activities and solidify our marketing channels. Then we will focus on developing the best activity allocation algorithm alongside well-being experts. We're the best team for this. As being students, we have first-hand experience of this problem and we're so passionate to help solve it. We have combined experience in starting a mental health startup and technology consulting. Our goal is to improve the awareness of the most accessible and effective solutions so that people can take action to live a more peaceful and happy life. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Matter of Mind. Now we're going to take a quick break and um, Jambi, are you able to share screen and to announce some of the interesting polls that we did over the last week to celebrate some of our cohorts? Yeah, so the cohort and the mentors will know that we set out a poll over the last week just answering some questions. Can everyone see my screen just to make sure it's all working? Yes, yeah, we can see screen. So we, this is all nominee. Um, we just did a few, few little fun nominations for our team to fill in and see what they thought of as the most successful or the most likely to start up. And I'll just be talking to a couple of those. So the first one that we have is, So our most accelerated team, the response that we got was drumroll, please Dana. <laughs> Your sense, congratulations to Manoj, Reg, Federico, and I should have looked up the names off the top of my head because I know there's a fourth member that I can't remember. Sure, sure, sure. Sean, <laughs> last but not least, congrats, congratulations to all of you who have been voted the most accelerated team since October, so congrats. Our second award is most likely to get into Y Combinator, the fancy American accelerator program, which we steal a lot of our ideas and take a lot of inspiration from, and I'm sure everyone here knows of it. From most, please Dana for the team. And the team is really cool. Congratulations, Joseph, for really cool. You have been nominated most likely to get into Y Combinator. So hopefully in a couple of years or maybe sooner than that, we'll see you there. Live up to our expectations. There's two more to come. So stay on the edge of your seats, guys, because you never know who it could be. Um, the next one is an individual that was voted most likely to get into Forbes 30 under 30. From off this day now. <laughs> And it was Samuel Ola from Medified who you guys just saw pitched. Congratulations, Samuel. And we obviously are all waiting to see what you do next. And the final award for tonight is the most out of the box thinking, um, the most out of the box idea. And our final award for tonight it goes to. <laughs> Jackie, who I believe is actually our next pitch. 
it is. So that those are our nominations, uh, cohort selected. So congratulations to you guys and to everyone else. We have more coming next week. So can't wait to see what you guys do. Um, I will now pass over to Parky. Thank you, Jambi, for that. And I hope everyone enjoyed that fun intermission and my drum rolls. Up next, we have Perky. If Baptiste or Amir, are you guys, how are you guys doing? Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you everyone for nominate, nominating us. Um, I'll let um, Amir share, share the screen. Sorry, I can't have the, um, the background. I apologize for this, but there we are. Hi, this is Perky, and we're your trust broker for responsible flying. Now, let me tell you why. This is a potential market of 4 billion people. And while 78% of travelers want to fly more responsibly, only 1% actually do. We know that a lot of you feel that way, and we're the same. Our findings tell us that most of us struggle to find incentives to do so, that the process is daunting and overly complex. That is why we created a transparent solution that encapsulates all available information without relying on any external offset scheme. We are integrating emissions into the flight booking process for you. Our solution is streamlined and seamless. Contrary to our competitors that solely focus on calculating emissions for a few journeys, or airlines with whom you have to pay for your offsets, Perky enables you to rip the rewards effortlessly. Simply download our free browser extension and all the job is done in the background by us for you. Access your favorite booking platform, search for your flight, and the less polluting you pick, the more you earn. You'll then be rewarded with our perky points that can be spent on sustainable perks from our partners. We identify two streams for our business model. Our immediate stream is the B2C model, executed by taking permissions when a perk is redeemed from our partners. As we grow, develop better insights, and test the beta, we aim to add a B2B model to gain more accurate information on consumer behavior and tailor the reward scheme by exchanging cleaner, anonymized data with our partners in the travel industry. We believe our team is perfectly fitted for our mission. United by a desire for sustainability, we have Amir, a data scientist and pilot himself, Ardil, engineer and marketing expert with strong expertise in social impact, and Baptiste, the innovation nerd of the team. We have already registered traction for more than 250 users and collaborated with industry experts. We now want to take off, and I may need to grow our connections and validity both within the aviation and sustainability fields. Partnerships are free of value for us, and that's where we need your help to create them. So who's looking to fly more responsibly? Join Perky. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Perky. Um, our next team, um, Lavyam, I think Mahek is having a bit of a trouble joining, so we'll move on to the next team, Mello. Nicole and Eddie, how are you guys doing? All good. Perfect. Yeah, all good. Uh... Show your screen, Eddie. Yeah, yeah. All right. Once the countdown starts, happy for you to take it away. Hi, I'm Nick. And today I'm going to tell you about how I ended up in hospital fearing for my life for five days. I've always enjoyed eating out with my friends and family. And after dinner one evening, I started to feel extremely ill. As a result, I went to the doctor who asked me to exclude key ingredients such as wheat, dairy and soya from my diet. With these restrictions, I struggled to communicate my needs with restaurants and find assistance regarding my new lifestyle. This resulted in me losing 12 kilograms in six weeks and having more reactions with the worst of it collapsing and spending five nights in hospital. But I am still here presenting to you. However, this isn't the case for Natasha or Owen who lost their lives due to miscommunication with restaurants. And this problem doesn't stop with me. It also extends to my co-founder. Absolutely. I'm Eddie. I have been vegan for three years and must sacrifice my preferences whenever eating out. Every time. And it's always me. I, alongside Nick, are only two of the 7.5 and 75 million people in the UK and Europe, respectively, who suffer in a similar way. Our solution to that pain is mellow. 
a platform which allows on-time, on-demand treatment of personal preferences when eating out. Once our customer is with their requirements, we take all the hassle away by helping them find places to eat by our recommendation and substitution system, which integrates into current restaurant engines. We're improving the quality of life by... So, apologies. Uh, we're improving the quality of life of eating out for millions of people and offer something not readily available by any of our competitors. This is our master's project at the number one Rhines University, at the, at the number one university for entrepreneurship. We are mentored by the WMD Accelerator team. And what we have just displayed is the unique selling point we have collectively worked and derived through 180 survey responses and 30 interviews. Here at Mello, we believe that every requirement is a special requirement. And our goal is to make the future of eating out with um, personal preferences simple. We're looking for 93,000 pounds investment for the first 12 months to start our journey, to start our, to start our journey enable every restaurant to cater for dietary requirements. If you'd like to help to help us achieve this, at least follow up with us after. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Melo. You guys did great. Up next, we have Revive. Angelica, how are we doing? I think you might be muted. Sorry, getting on mute. Let me just share my screen. Okay, here we go. Hi there, this is Revive. Did you know that in the UK, around 10,000 items of clothing are sent to the landfill every five minutes? This represents a loss of 140 million pounds every year. We need to reduce fashion waste and one of the ways to do it is to extend the life cycle of clothes with the help of experts. This also represents a great opportunity to support the growth of green services, such as the ones developed by tailors. Revive will reduce fashion waste by supporting the market growth for repairing. How will this work? Through our platform, consumers will be able to find, compare, and choose the best tailor close to their location. Revive will make sure that their clothes are repaired, taken care of, and returned to the customer. Revive will be part of the green recovery. Our potential customers are young people that are environmentally conscious and have become online shoppers due to the pandemic. Contrary to most sustainable solutions, we are helping them to really reduce consumption by connecting them with our tailors. They are experienced business people with a high quality service that have been really affected by the pandemic and need a strong digital strategy to recover. Our roadmap includes first a pilot in East London. Then we will move forward to all London and include new services such as repurposing, upcycling and recycling. Our end goal is to be in all major cities of the world. Our team is composed of five amazing women that are committed to sustainable development. And we're going to fight fashion waste until the end. We are asking today for financial and technical support for two things. First, for our logistic and marketing strategy. And second, for our digital platform. Thank you. Thank you very much, Revive. Up next, we have Samuel from Hands In. Everyone see the screen? Yes, we can. So oh, happy for you to start whenever you see the countdown. Two seconds. Um, ready. Uh, hey, my name is Samuel Flynn, and I'm the co-founder of Hands In. Currently, online stores only enable one member from a group to pay. This results in one friend having to upfront the costs and be left out of pocket. Let's go for a classic old example. Let's say a group of you wants to order a pizza online. You go to checkout, but only one of you can pay. An argument outbreaks over who is going to upfront the cost. And for that individual, when are they going to get the money back? This results in cart abandonment, a tarnished user experience. So how are we going to solve this problem? Well, introducing Hands In, a new payment method enabling university students to pay together online. Groups can select Hands In as their payment method and divvy up the payments and connect their friends to the transaction all in one place. 
resulting in no one having to upfront the costs ever again. The competitive landscape is split into three categories, but why are they bad? Bill management apps reduce users to tracking bills and not splitting them. Challenger banks still force users to upfront costs and utility providers focuses on one segment only. And why are we gonna win? In our app, groups can bill manage and bill split. There is no need to upfront at any cost. Groups can settle all at once. And we cover a variety of segments from takeaways to hotel getaways. We want to invent a new way for groups to pay together. Our business model sees us charge a 1.6% transaction fee to the merchant. And we are extremely confident of exceeding over 1.8 million in net revenue by 2023. How are we gonna get there though? Initially, we wanna target SMEs and startups. And then once we establish proof of concept, move on to the industry leaders such as Deliveroo and then address our solution through our fellow 2.4 billion Gen Zs worldwide. Our progress so far has seen us have in place three pilot agreements and over 500 early adopters anticipated for our release in June. Our team consists of myself, co-founders Raul Patel and Paul Ogentine. We are asking for financing of 50,000 pounds to reach 10 corporate customers and 5,000 users by October, 2021. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samuel. Up next, we have Joseph from Relegal. All right, your time starts whenever you see the countdown. Yep. Hi, my name, oh, is it countdown? Hi, my name is Joseph. Oh, hi, my name is Joseph. I'm the founder of Relegal. And I really, we believe that funding, uh, litigation funding should be all accessible to all SMEs. Here's a picture of Mark Zuckerberg being integrated in the, law, uh, in the courtroom. Um, problems like litigation, finance, um, IP infringement, breach of contract are very common business problems that everyone will encounter eventually. And we believe that you may encounter too. So like a problem like uh, breach of contract, <clears throat> sorry. Oh, sorry guys you're doing great do you want us to do you want to restart i think we reset sorry sorry, sorry sorry guys no worries you're doing great let me just close the thumbnail very quickly Yep. Hi, my name is Joseph. At Relego, we believe that all SMEs should have access to litigation funding. Here's a picture of Mark Zuckerberg being integrated in for, um, for court problems. A problem like breach of contract, IP infringement are actually very common problems that SMEs may encounter, including you. So we believe that um, all SMEs should have litigation fundings. So when they have litigation funding problem, when they have problems with the funding, what should they do? A uh, very common thing that can, they can do is actually look for legal aid, but legal aid is only available for commercial cases. With bank loan, they can get bank loan, but there's additional interest. So it's not the most financial smart way. With litigation funding, it's good, but they only fund cases that yield high return and it's too labor intensive for them. When we look at the market size, the current market size is 1.6 billion, only funded for big litigation cases. And the 1.5 billion pound is actually the amount of money being funded by the government for the legal aid. 11.6 billion pounds is actually the amount of money being funded by SMEs themselves. And this amount of money is actually, is, there is very little access to justice because they have to pick the money from their own pocket. So what we do is we combine machine learning and litigation finance. By using litigation finance and machine learning, we're able to vet cases and predict the case outcomes. By doing so, we can streamline the litigation finance process and then we can scale the process and then make it more less labor intensive. So what we do is you apply for us and then within two weeks, you can get the, the, the funding if it's meritorious. And if you win the case, you don't have to pay. If you win the case, we split the winning. If you lose the case, we split the damages together. So in terms of attractions, we've been talking to law firms, legal clinics, and then legal experts to in seek of meritorious cases. Our team is composed of me and Chubi, who are expert in, in law extensive knowledge, and Liana, who has a lot of knowledge in data science, machine learning, Anna, who's correspondent for operation. With, uh, with Beligo, we believe that all SMEs should have access to justice and have litigation funding. Thank you. 
Thank you for, very much, Joseph, for that amazing pitch. Up next, we have Lauren from Legal Loft. Dang. Oh, oh, the background. Was... oh, sorry. Sorry about that. I just muted him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> am I saying I couldn't get the background done? So sorry about that. No worries at all. Happy for you to start whenever you see the countdown. Thank you, thanks. Okay, so Legal Loft is a legal information and contract drafting service um, focused on media and startup companies. And our main objectives are to provide transparent legal information, affordable legal information, and to increase legal literacy amongst startups and media companies in particular. Um, so the market value is quite large. So at the moment, there's about 6 million SMEs in the UK. So that's companies with zero to 250 employees. Um, and 700 case startups were founded in 2020. And we've estimated that our potential clients are approximately 100 K. Um, so yeah. Um, and oh, one minute. Um, so yeah, the market size is quite, quite large. Sorry. Um, and yeah, the main reason why Legal Off was started was to increase, to provide startups, media companies with better value for money and um, to avoid lots of legal um, jargon and provide transparency in the legal um, sector. Um, and I guess our main USP is to increase legal literacy. Um, and there's a bit about me. So at the moment, I'm a paralegal. Um, and I've qualified within civil litigation and contract law, um, but I've practiced in a range of areas as well, which will also be relevant to startups. Um, and one of my main interests is improving legal literacy for those without a law background. Um, so the main things we're looking for at the moment are co-founders and mentors, so mostly mentors in, um, in the legal sector and people with experience um, like managing social media. Um, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lauren. It seems like some of the guests were not able to um, look at the slides moving forward. So in the breakout rooms, happy for you to reshare that for so the guests can have a look. Up next, we have Finn's AI. Happy for you guys to take it away. Thank you. We're ready. OK. Hello, we're Finn's AI. Did you know that 76% of millennials do not have sufficient financial knowledge? 54% are concerned about their ability to repay a student loan debt. This means that students are crying out for better financial education. Our solution is FinSci, an all-in-one app that will inform about the latest financial news, will teach financial topics through videos, and will provide a safe environment to share personal experiences regarding money-related issues. Our target market are students aged 18 to 24 that are struggling with finances and want to learn about financial topics. Our total available market in the UK is 5.4 million, from which 2.8 million are students in higher education. And we expect to have one third of undergrads in London using our app within 12 months. We have conducted over 30 interviews for MVP validation, receiving feedback that 85% said that we were helping to solve the problem, and 93% said that we'll, they will download FinCI. Our direct competitors include Finamize and Investopedia that provide daily financial news and provide investing insights for a price. And our indirect competitors include Clear and Zogo that connect with your bank account and provide financial advice via an AI chatbot. However, our competitive advantage lies in being completely free to students being an app and offering a community platform all in one app. We are a freemium model, offering a free plan that offers all the essentials and having a premium plan at just £10 a month, providing the relevant products to segmented audiences, such as our career modules offering investment banking and consulting information. We have built out a uh, prototype of the app and will launch by the end of the month. To release a completed app by the end of the year, we are seeking a professional app developer for Android and iOS and are seeking introductions to investors with experience with working with mobile app startups we would love to hear your thoughts. We're a global and diverse team with experience in organizational behavior, banking, and AI. I think we're the best people for the job. Thank you for listening, and please be able to reach out. Thank you very much, Finn's AI. Up next, we have one of the last 
pitches, Pedro from Fractal Software Technology. Okay, perfect. Thanks a lot, Dana. Hello, everyone. I'll just share screen and we're set to go. Uh, my background doesn't seem to be working very good, but uh, just I think it'll be fine. Let me know if you're able to see my screen. Yes, we can see your screen right now. Okay. I'm happy for you to start when up. Perfect. So uh, I'm going to start. Hello, everyone. We're Fractal Software, and we will make software development available to every company out there. Uh, got stuck, sorry. Fractal is a platform that matches software projects and quality developers while offering the best project management as a service. Our story begins a couple of years back. I used to work as a project manager on a large e-commerce and very quickly realized that the cost of implementing software was immense, but more importantly, it was out of reach for startups and SMEs. This issue was later confirmed when, as an entrepreneur myself, I tried to build my first MVP. With the budget at hand, I had to go for a freelancer. After five months, we realized that the freelancer was not actually a software developer, and we had been wasting our time and money for the past five months. This story, along with similar stories from dozens of startups, became what today is Fractal Software Technologies. At Fractal, we help startups and SMEs access high quality development skills and offset the risks that are usually associated with freelancing or outsourcing. More importantly, we're able to do this at very affordable costs. On average, 43% less than the actual market in the UK. In London alone, hundreds of millions of pounds are spent annually in the development of software for early stage companies. We want to become the best option out there for them. This year, we're planning to implement 140 projects with a monthly growth of 27%. This will leave our revenue a bit short of 400,000 pounds. We launched our pilot in mid-February and are already fully booked and waitlisting projects. We're on the way to get there, but we want to get there faster. And that is why we're looking for a seed investment of 250,000 pounds and help securing the right partnerships to keep that demand going. Our team has over 13 years of experience implementing and leading technology-based projects. And we look forward to working with you and your companies into securing the best ideas and transforming it into successful software solution and successful business ventures. You can find us at fractalsoftware.com or write to us at admin at fractalsoftware.com. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Petro. Um, one of the startups, Love Yum, um, John V, could you confirm whether Mahek is in the call right now? Yeah, Mahek, are you in the call right now? All right, let's um for now let's move on to the breakout rooms. So John V in a moment will 